one. So, task one, looking at the database. A review of the database and the examples of the tests you have conducted. How you test the database. What does that mean? Well, we have a database. How do you talk to that database? Data connector. Data connector. What goes across the wiring data connector? SQL. So, you should have an example of SQL that you have actually used to test your database and doing what it should do. So, the tests should include the SQL tests. To check. and bound data. If you've already got unit tests for these, you use those and just show those unit tests. What do I mean by correct erroneous and bound data on the database? Um, um, stuff that you know is, um, is, is there stuff you know that's not? And stuff that should be accepted. Like the username and password should return a correct ID if it's the correct username and password. Erroneous is data that should not be accepted. So it might be if you type in a blank password and your system should say a blank password should never be accepted and it should catch that and say this should not be allowed before it actually gets as far as sending the result to it. Erroneous data can sometimes be, say it's asking for a number, you type in some writing, what happens? So it could be like it's asking for date of birth and put in QZZZQ. No one here has date of birth and QZZZQ. So what happens in the actual system? Does it work or does it not work? It should fall over gracefully, i.e. it should catch these errors that someone's put in and so these are not real errors that, uh, or oh, you've typed something in the wrong, please try again. What is boundary data? Anyone know what boundary data is? That's the, uh, Lower, lower values. Up lower bounds for any particular value. So, take that high score table, for example. You shouldn't be able to get a minus score unless you can get a particular high score table. So, therefore, check the potential score is zero. What is the potential score of minus one? It should say, I'm sorry, that's not a valid score. It's not a date of birth. You want to make sure that, um, say, the person says they're 140 years old, it comes up with no message back and says, I'm sorry, you can't get a date of birth that says you're 140. What is the eldest person in, in uh, the UK at the moment? 110. There's two guys born on the same day. So, and they're based in life. 110 years old. So if it's over 120, the oldest person ever is 118. So 120 is pretty much the boundaries for sort of uh, data birth, for example. Um, that is all the tests, and it's just solely looking at the database and the SQL queries that go on top of it. Oh, wrong. So, that will get you critically reviewing and testing the relation databases. So we'll go back to reviewing in a second. Create documentation to support the implementation and testing of the relation database system. This means that if you want to create a data dictionary, I'm going to have to sit down. Um, if you want to create a data dictionary, um, Yes, you can put descriptions on every field to say what those items are. And that in itself is enough to be able to say, show someone else who's looking at that database what that database actually does. Um, explain your verification and validation have been addressed. Well, that's part of your erroneous and boundary data. What is validation? What is verification? Does everyone remember the differences? Validation and verification. Which one is which? Verification checks the data is of the correct information. Validation checks the data is the correct type. So a validation check might be on an email field to check you've actually typed in an email address, i.e. it says it has an at symbol. It doesn't know if it's your email address or not, it just knows it is an email address. But, um, validate, uh, sorry, verification is where you type in the email address twice to check that it actually is the, the person who's not mistyped it anywhere. Okay? And those checks and balances should be in your system and should be in your database. So how do you review a database? First of all, if it meets the requirements, 
but you can go further than that. Is it normalized correctly? Is there any other way that you could have structured your database with hindsight that would make it work better? Um, sometimes, I've actually got to my year ones at the moment, they built their database to work and it kind of works okay, but actually some of the queries to actually get information out of the database have several inner joins and things just to get the information that they need. It actually would be much easier and simpler if they've only had like a couple of tables rather than 12 in some, some cases. Those sorts of reviews can be mentioned as well. Okay. Um, all of that is um, the first stage for being able to prove that you have an understanding of how your database actually uh, works, should work, and how it works in your program. There's then this funny one that says, explain how control mechanisms have been used. What we're looking at there is version control. Okay, so as you are building your product and changing things in your database layer and changing things in the way your program works, how did you make sure that you kept everything up to date? If you worked in a group of people, how did you make sure that all of you had the same things that were up to date at the same time and didn't overwrite each other's work, etc.? That side of things. Using critical reflection to evaluate your own work and justify your conclusions will get you distinction criteria. Task two is doing the same sorts of things, but for the web application itself, okay? So critically reviewing it and testing it. Does it work? Does it work the way that you want to? Analyze the test results against expected results, i.e. the unit tests and any other tests that you may have conducted. Evaluate independent feedback. We're going to do this probably next week, not next week, it's Easter next week, after we come back from Easter, uh, where we'll have your web applications running on the computers. And other people will then come to your programs and have a look at them. Okay. Um, we might do it so that everyone goes around as a group to one person at a time, so that person can actually, so that the person can actually explain what it should do, in, which is obviously different to what it actually does. Um, in most people's cases, um, task three is a bit more complicated, depending on if you've got graphics in your project or not. If you have created graphics for your project, you just do the same sort of thing on the graphics for your project. If you have not. You have to evaluate based on the images that you created, you know, with the two different styles, the dark style, the light style, the happy style, that sort of thing. Okay. That's as far as I'm going to talk about today, uh, because task four is uh, pulling it all together, and we'll go through that in a bit more detail another time. Is everyone clear on all those different bits, tasks one, two, and three? Task one is the, obviously the easy place to start. Uh, you've got about 20 minutes before... Um, uh, Alex comes through to give his talk, so um, if you can get on with that, off you go. Start point.